Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and today I want to talk a bit about Middle Earth Shadow of War. So I basically finished the game, and I want to share my opinion about it. I'm just gonna start it, and I want to say that I'm not 100% uh, finished it. So there's the last act, as you might or might not know, is the so-called Shadow Wars that uh, force you to defend your own um, castles from enemies over and over again. And there's basically first four phases are four different castles and then you just get to defend them over and over again until there's like phase 10 where you have to defend all four of them, which is in my opinion ridiculous and I just got tired of that. But I'm gonna talk about that in a separate thing. So if you don't know, uh, Shadow 4 is the second installment in the series. Uh, the first one uh, was pretty great. I mean, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, yeah, sure, there was some downsides to it, but it had an amazing nemesis system. So this game is basically more of it. So if you didn't like the first one, you won't like this one as well. Um, if you did like the first one, uh, well, this one has got a lot to offer on top of it. So here's a castle that I actually lost because I was uh, careless. And as you can see, there's now an overlord uh, who is, uh, you know, legendary level 65 orc. Uh, and, you know, if I want to kill him, I have to retake the castle. I have to build my own force. I can attack him right up, so I don't even need to kill the war chiefs or whatever, but he will have all the defenses. If I choose to, I can kill all of those guys the same way it worked in the first one, actually. And then, uh, in this case, when I attack the castle, there will be less um, defenses available because all these war chiefs represent some sort of defense. And this is sort of the main core of the game. There is a you know storyline which is kind of cheesy and out of lore of uh, Lord of the Rings, but whatever. Um, the gameplay itself is again very similar to um, what you would find in the first part. You know, you got a few new skills that are pretty fun, but mostly you know you just sneak around. You can like find some orcs and then you just go up to them and you can either. Uh, dominate them or uh, kill them. So like I'm gonna just uh, dominate this guy for example. Take some time. Come on. There we go. He's now gonna fight for me, you know. Uh, the combat itself is sort of Arkham style combat. Nothing too fancy here. So you got, again, you got a few skills like, you know, uh, Ice Blast or whatever that can freeze enemies and then you got a nice executions. Uh, which I'm, I'm gonna try to pull off uh, if I just don't screw up my combo meter here and I uh, can kill him. So there's like finishers and you know, there's a bunch of stuff including your bow that can do some crazy things. But overall, it's not a major upgrade over the last part. Uh, there's like some elven speed that allows you to traverse way faster, which is something I definitely do like about that. Um, other than that, there's really not that much that it can offer over the first part, so like explosions, barrels, domination, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, if, if you enjoyed again the first part, this uh, this one um, expands on it quite a lot, and it has, by the way, inventory management. So let's talk about that. You got a lot of gear that is, you know, this is my legendary gear that you can destroy, but it usually it's not really worth it. Uh, the gear is upgradable, so if you upgrade it, you get some additional bonuses. Uh, to unlock those upgrades, you have to complete uh, some sort of challenges, like for each gear, it's actually different stuff. And, uh, you know, it has a fun side. So it's like, um, for example, all this hood will uh, recover 10 health for every enemy uh, while I'm cursed. And it's also increased the damage dealt by uh, my beast allies by 50%. Considering this game is mostly, I would call, orc management rather than, you know, as the first one orc killing simulator, um, this is a good buff. So the core difference here is that um, when you actually attack uh, the castle, wait a second, where's my map? When you attack the castle, when you defend the castle, it's not about you and other orcs. It's about your army and the other army, right? So I'm going to Real quick, uh, travel to that point to show you the um, attack, which is you know not much different from defense. Okay, there we go. So we are here at the capture start point, so we can start this capture mission, and we'll see the layout. You know, uh, we can do siege upgrades, so we can pick our uh, assault force. So we're gonna have our assault leader who's level 50. Uh, maybe I want to change it. I think I had someone more powerful. So I got this legendary orc uh, 57, which is a higher. You know, the higher the level, the better essentially. Uh, even though the levels are not exactly always important, so if you pair up uh, two orcs to fight each other that have um, about 10 level difference, but they can exploit each other weaknesses. So for example, one orc is afraid of fire and the other one has fire blades. 
then the guy with the fire blades will actually win with a pretty high probability. So uh, you don't really, you know, want to do that. So you want to kind of be a bit tactical, but if the level difference is too big, then it honestly doesn't matter that much. Uh, yeah, we can put that guy and then we can uh, 43. I think I was like someone else. We can uh, level 50. Yeah, I can. I want to leave the other guy 55 to be my uh, sort of bodyguard. Okay, we got the sappers. Uh, so in addition to picking the assault leaders, you can pick the upgrades for them. Uh, so this guy mounted cavalry all look high. So what do they have? They have reinforced walls, iron gates, uh, savage host, cursed siege beasts, war grog, uh, farsight archers, and fire mines, which is annoying. So we definitely don't want to take the sappers because they will just blow up on those mines. Um, we might take yeah look hi why not they are pretty hard to blow up um gonna take hunter hosts so they're gonna hurl stuff at those defenders or the uh, whatever the savages from far away we're gonna take the fury siege beasts because we're just gonna rain fire on them from top um shallops brood wargrog rogue uh, we're gonna take a drake because you know drakes are always great um we're gonna take mounted archers yes let's go with that and for this guy is inspiring banners and overpower you know what let's go with overpower uh quicker capture it's always great so as you can see here now on the left top you can see my assault force level 529 which is ridiculous um, and then they have level 554 because you know their levels are higher especially their leader level for some reason the assault it never takes into account your own level which is kind of like e why but i whatever so we're gonna start now and um, along the way, you know, along with the gameplay, I want to show you a bunch of problems this game actually has because there are more than one. Um, we are going to talk about loot boxes issue at slightly later time. First, I'm going to show you the gameplay problems, right? So here's our army. Here's all our orcs that are going to follow us and attack this uh, castle. And here's our captain. So we're going to get... Uh, quick introductions to each of them. Uh, we also see the enemy. There's the war beasts on top, so we can uh, actually destroy them. We're gonna greet. We're gonna be greeted by the uh, enemy uh, overlord, who's gonna yeah say that he's gonna cure, kill us, and blah blah blah, and all that stuff. Uh, this is actually problem number one, and I think the major problem here that there is no bloody way to skip those cutscenes. So I'm like, I'm pressing buttons now, but nothing happens. You know, there's no prompt. Um, I've seen this many many times even with the same orcs you know because those guys don't die they are pretty good they survive so i take them on each attack in most of the places and every fucking time i see this cutscene it's like hey i'm gonna kill you no like just come on let me skip that and that is um you might think you know that's not a big problem it's like yeah sure you like have a small cutscene here but uh how bad can it be Okay, we're gonna blow this thing up. Um, gonna shoot those. Uh, uh, it's broken, so we can dominate it. And we can actually shoot this huge beast into um, enemies if it doesn't lag out as it did last time and doesn't just start uh, basically killing everything. Um, as was a wrong button, so I actually didn't want to do that, but uh, fine, we can mount that beast. Let's do this. Whoa, nope. Uh, there we go. Okay, we can try to shoot this beast. Uh, so this bit of gameplay is probably the most entertaining, so to say, uh, as our captains fighting those captains. So we can shoot just stuff here, and then we can, you know, we can just dismount. Uh, they have a broken drake flying around, so this might be worth capturing and uh, making it ours. But maybe a bit later. Let me show you the first problem with this cutscene. So you can see there's two captains down there. If we jump down right now and try to attack them. Okay, I actually just killed one. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> uh, but uh, let us try to attack the second one. Um, hey, come on, get off that Karagor, son of a bitch. He's retreating, what? No, you're not retreating, stop there. Okay, I think he doesn't want to have an introduction. Um, well, he's broken, so let's just let's just add, add him to our ranks, right? Um, mo most of the time, even if you attack with way weaker force, it's quite easy to actually just recruit whoever you get along the way and get a much larger force to help you. Um, yeah, so let's try that again. So we got the capture point. We whoop, just sort off. We capture that stuff. 
So the target is to capture all the points and then defeat the overlord. So we captured the first one. Now we proceed to the second one. You get XP along the way and uh, it kind of replenishes your health. Right, so uh, can we show off the problem now? So we got a guy over here, can shoot some arrows at him. Uh, we can capture that guy, why not dominate him, make him ours. I actually got level up, so I guess I'm level 60 now. Okay, um, whoops. Yeah, one of the problems of combat system is that it doesn't really distinguish us really well from, you know, who are your orcs and who are not, so it will just freeze everyone. There was a short introduction from this guy. So here's the problem. When you fight uh, high-end, um, battles and there's like more than five captains on this one point you will get introductions for each and every one of them like this and there's no way to skip that and again at this high-end level fights it gets infuriating like literally you know it's like hey i'm gonna kill you and then the next one steps in hey i'm gonna kill you as well it's like hey i'm gonna kill you too it's like come on just shut up already just let me like kill you dominate you whatever just Stop with this cutscenes bullshit. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. The, um, so theoretically you can slide under him. There we go, we just uh, stunned him with an arrow. And you know, there, there are cool moments, especially when you're fighting one-on-one. -on -one. So we can actually uh, dominate, come on, dom I said dominate him. Ah, oh, now he's enraged, come on, for God's sake. You cannot dominate enraged cap captains because of course you cannot. Uh, so we got to capture this point. I think he should be knocked out now. No, he's not. Uh, can you stop? Son of a... He just went to the point C. Okay. We got to pick up some arrows. This is another mechanic that I'm not a fan of. Uh, I kind of get what they're trying to do here to sort of limit you and make you move more to find the arrows and, you know, to kind of, kind of um, try to be better at it. But I don't have enough arrows to shadow dominate him, which is annoying. Uh, I think there are some arrows over here. Um, the main problem with the arrows is that minimap is so busy, if you look at it right now, it's really hard to find anything. And those arrows are everywhere, so it's like, okay, so what do I do? Okay, let's recruit that guy, make him fight for us. Right, um, actually this assault is going, you know, pretty nicely because uh, we are, well, I mean, we're way more powerful than they are, so as it turns out. Uh, our captain is bleeding out, so I guess I'll capture the point and then help him. So sometimes your captains won't be killed, but they will be bleeding out. Uh, and you will have a short duration when you can basically help them. Um, I don't know how that works exactly, because sometimes the enemy captains will just murder them. And there we go. There's another introduction. I looked at it, captain, during the siege setup, right? So I, I saw that he was there. I actually theoretically could have looked at his weaknesses and strengths and everything, but I didn't because I was lazy. And uh, why do I have to like hear him again and see this cutscene that is unskippable and you know there's no way to do anything there? I God damn it, those freaking yes. Let's freeze one of our captains because that's a good thing to do. Um, yeah, no, come on, attack me again. There we go, nice parry. So uh, normal grunts are literally zero threat if you're careful. Um, like your parry can murderate them from like one hit if you got an upgrade which I do, which I think is the most useful upgrade in the, um, in the game, basically. But yeah, so, okay, uh, we got some other people coming on. I, I think I captured the last point. Shouldn't it be, what? Yeah, there you go. So you see those cutscenes, right? There's no way to skip them. All I can see is like right click the uh, right stick. Then I will get to see the um, captain identity, which is not exactly helpful because once again, I already saw it during the uh, setup phase. Come on. Okay. I think I'm just gonna skip to the overlord fight and show you the uh, overlord fight and then show you the siege that is actually defense and show you the problem with the loot boxes and um, all that other stuff. There's another bug actually. Sometimes shadow uh, domination doesn't really work. So you like, as you've seen, I've tried to dominate him, but it didn't didn't really work. It just like I was forced to do it again. And there's a lot of like tiny bugs like this that are really really annoying. Okay, uh, let us go and kill that overlord, and then I can show you the problem with the loot boxes and uh, high level assaults.
All right, here we are at a different castle, and uh, this time around it's a defense part, so I have to defend my castle from the attackers. And here I'm going to show you the problem with uh, most of the end game content this game has to offer. So as you can see here, my castle has an overlord who is a uh, level 35. By the way, I haven't found a way yet to replace him. Um, maybe there is way, but uh, you know, game didn't, didn't really in indicate this in any how, and I was too lazy to look. So yeah, I have an all level 35 that I can't really replace. But basically, if you lose all your war chips, you are done anyway. So I already defended this castle three times, and this is going to be the fourth time. And as you can see here, the last defense was like level 50. So I got some guys who are like level 53, 52. This one is, well, 60 plus, and, um, well, most of my guys, like 48, 46, they're gonna ob get obliterated by those people here. I've got two options. Option number one, I can go back to map, and I can do those nemesis missions over here that will, uh, well, level up my guys, right? Um, I can kill off my guys. Well, I can really kill them off. I can throw them into the pits where they fight. Um, so here you go. So this is basically all I can do. Uh, I can even command some of them for no apparent reason, right? So this says awaiting command, but the command button doesn't really work. It says captain is involved in active mission. He's not. This literally says awaiting command. This is a very common bug. I don't know why. Like those guys, yeah, okay, sure. They are in the mission. You can see the mission and everything's good. Those guys are not. I cannot command them anyway. So if you command them, uh, you can either make them bodyguard or give them training orders, which you can purchase for coins. Uh, which upgrade them basically, but uh, this is about it. So I cannot dismiss him. I cannot kill him at, at will, right? This is, they supposed to be dispensable orcs. In this case, they are like, I don't know what. So it's kind of annoying. And there's two ways. So as I said, one way is to send them, uh, to level them up through quests. Each quest gives about like about two, three um, levels, I guess. Let's kill the dragon because I don't like him. And the other way is to throw them down into pits. So by throwing them into pits, you're basically uh, wagering, you know, that your orc can kill the other orc. Dragon, come back. I want to kill you. Come on, one more shot. Um, yeah, the game has random quests and random dragons and everything. Random daily quests, I think, as well, that are pretty neat. But uh, yeah, let's go back to the pits. So there are pits... Uh, here, so you can see there's like fight pits, ma warriors, maggots, and champions. You go there and you pit your warrior against some other warrior. And um, whatever the outcome, you can actually, for example, if your warrior loses, if the other warrior doesn't have the iron wheel perk that prevents you from dominating him, you can actually just get him for your army. Which is nice, but you have to watch the whole fight. And when you have to do this, uh, how many slots do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then Overlord, so I can swap Overlord. So we have six people to swap. And that is a lot of farming, basically, right? So um, what this game suggests you is go buy loot boxes. And there's a whole market tab over here. And if you are lazy, you just go here and buy loot boxes. You can buy them for in-game currency. And as you can see, have I have 88,000 and you know buying a couple of loot boxes at least in the end game, is not a major problem. So I didn't spend any currency until the 10th uh, wave of the Shadow, of, uh, um, Shadow Wars. So I can actually buy, so there's like two guys there, but you cannot buy only three, for example. I need three, right? I need six new orcs. You cannot buy three, you can only buy five. Why? I have no freaking idea. And even if I try to use mouse and keyboard, there's like, uh, I press something and I got a box, but it didn't open. Okay, bought one. So when you open the box, you actually get two random captains. And the thing is, they are not even your level. They might be below you. So, um, okay, I got one epic captain over here. He's level 57. And this one, 58. Like, you know, okay, against level 60, they might be okay. Uh, same goes for uh, loot chests. There are loot chests with gear. I have no idea why you would need this because gear is mostly pointless. Like, at least that's what I found. Uh, but let's talk about more about problems, right? So I have now this captain level 57. I can deploy him here. So, and the thing is, uh, right now there are two spots, right? That are taken by enemy captains. I think if I deploy him, no, it's actually replacing my follower. So here's another issue I have with it. It tells you it's gonna replace one of your followers and they're gonna fight, right? Why can't I choose who? Like I have a bunch of shitty followers that I don't really want. 
And when you press A, it's just gonna match them up on random and then, you know, kill one. Okay, he killed enemy captain, which is great for me. And this is, by the way, how the duels in the pits should look. <laughs> and uh, so if I try to deploy a next one, I again gamble. Like, can I, if I deploy, if I press this A button now, will it actually kill off my epic guy or will it, will it just kill some shitty level 30 orc? Considering they uh, sort of suggest that you spend real money on this, I have no idea who would will, but hey. Um, they, like, this system is so broken. And again, by this end game, there is like, you know, this is the best choice you have if you don't want to spend hours upon hours upon hours of grinding this stuff. So now I have level 56 orc over here. 52 is fine, so we have this 40. Um, yeah, as our level 57 guy. And then if we take one more, I think we're still gonna be severely under leveled. Okay, 52. Let's see, uh, maybe we have someone else who is higher level. I do have some of the orcs left from the past defense, but you know, they don't really help. They're 55, okay. We're still uh, almost 80 levels below the attackers and they have a bunch of upgrades. Okay, we can get some upgrades here, you know, just to see, I think they do um, increase the level slightly. So uh, luckily you don't have to buy upgrades every time. You just buy them once for Fortress and then you can just toggle them. Uh, but they, again, they are, you know, not exp extremely expensive. But all this sort of um, forcing you to grind stuff, it actually breaks the best system in the game. So again, if you are not familiar with it, the most interesting system here is the Nemesis system, right? The fact that you could uh, actually you have those nemesis missions and you could fight with the uh, captains and they sort of they can survive they can ambush you you have this kind of stories unleashing with them right and the strength of the first game was that um over the um, i don't remember how much it was like 20 hours i played it i never saw even one repeating captain all of them were unique here i saw already 20 captains who were well i mean maybe they looked slightly different but they were having the same names the same post fixes the same weapons the same lines it gets incredibly tedious and i like you know they could have awaited it by just doing four waves of uh shadow wars but no they had to do 10 because otherwise nobody would buy the bloody loot boxes because at wave 10, like, again, you know, I don't want to spend like two hours grinding this stuff. I just want to see an ending and I still have two more quests to finish, I believe. Let me just zoom out over here and see. So this is wave 10. I somehow did the first two. Yeah, I have two more quests and then uh, basically I will see the true ending. I don't know if I will ever have uh, patience to do that, but basically buying loot boxes is my only option, you know, when either I'm willing to spend... Uh, Come on, I just want to exit the bloody map. No, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Okay, so either my option is to grind them to my level uh, or, you know, kill them off and recruit new captains, but that takes like half an hour per captain or something, or just buy loot boxes. And guess what most of people will pick? Yeah, you're right. And this has no place here, uh, in my opinion, at least this has no place preventing you from seeing the ending of the game. If they would just do the end game, that would be nice. I mean, you know, for people who like grind, that's perfect. I think they are uh, recently announced that they're going to do the endless Shadow Wars. And for that purpose, this is actually amazing. So if they remove the level cap and you will be able to level as much as you want. Sure, for people who love this stuff, absolutely. Otherwise, I really don't see any point be beyond the Shadow Wars stage four, which is the Force Castle, which is the unique defense, basically. Why the hell do they have to do six more and all of them repeating several times? Like this just infuriates me. Right, and another thing, right, right, I forgot. So you have your level, right? You level up, you gain more uh, things. So my uh, Italian is now level 60. I have unlocked most of the skills. I think actually all of them now. Yeah, I only have one which is like locked behind the quest. And uh, the problem here is that you cannot dominate orcs who are higher than you in level why i mean i guess i could understand why on the lower levels because they want to you know go and kill and dominate the way more powerful orc because this is quite possible because uh, you just need to scare them off using their weakness and then you can dominate them right away right so if you like capture level 60 orc at the very beginning of the game that would be a bit boring 
But at the end game, why is this like, why there's no skill that I can unlock that allows me to dominate anyone? I, I have no idea. And this is annoying because most of the orcs who attack now, at least I don't think maybe not in this attack, but in the past attack, they were 60 plus. Like I cannot dominate the main guy here. Why? Well, because he's level 63. There's the mechanic with uh, shaming, so you can dominate and then shame him, which will reduce his level and scare him away. And then you have to go around the map, search him again to capture him again. And this is again like half an hour of time wasted just to capture one orc who's gonna be your level anyway. So what's the point? Um, so yeah, in general, you know, I I did enjoy everything up until the act four or part four of act four of Shadow Wars. It was really great because I enjoyed the first part and there's basically just more of that. Uh, combat is still wonky, but after that, it just get ridiculous with all this unskippable cutscenes with orc introductions, with the whole grinding stuff and loot boxes, like just forcing them your throat. Um, on the other hand, I think I got the game for 30 bucks from Green Man Gaming. They had a ridiculous discount on it. And well, I say that 30 is a completely fair price for it. So I won't spend a penny more on that. I looked at the DLC and all of them look boring as hell and just more grinding for loot boxes essentially. So no, thank you. But those 40 hours, I think that I sanctioned in up till this point, they were fun. That was, that was great. So just, you know, just dropping it at this point and never returning it, it's just, well, completely worth it, to put it this way. So if you think that's uh, something that you would like to do, then definitely pick it up. Maybe not now, maybe on a 50% discount when it's like below 30, I guess. Um, otherwise, yeah, not do not look at it. There's nothing, nothing really specifically new in here. Just some minor improvements, which are, you know, pretty great. Yeah, so this was Middle-earth Shadow 4. Thank you for watching and as usual, I see you next time. Bye.